Welcome to this short video that will hopefully serve as a quick introduction to the culling tool that I have created. It allows you to cull geometry based on a camera frustum and includes the ability to cull based on a single frame or a frame range. It takes packed or non-packed geometry and also culls based on connectivity. So without further ado, let's jump into Houdini and get started. In Houdini, I've gone ahead and created a really simple scene created myself a camera and the camera just moves over time and I've also gone ahead and created a box scatter some points inside that box use the point vop just to randomly move those points over time and then I've copied a sphere onto those points so we've got stuff to cull so let's go ahead and install our tool file import Houdini digital asset my path has already got the path to the asset here but go ahead and find yours and then hit install cool. now hit tab we should have a T tools and select TT culling it's requiring an input and the input is the geometry we want to cull let's go ahead and just plug that in and let's go ahead and select our camera and let's view that. And now let's go ahead and see what the tool is doing and some of the features of the tool. So let's turn on show guide geometry. You can see here the camera frustum that it's using to cull our points. So if I go ahead and just move the timeline, you can see how as the points are coming in and out of that camera frustum, and as the camera frustum is moving, they are being culled. Looking at the camera settings, we've got a Z near, a Z far, and an overscan. So the Z near is the nearest point to the camera that gets culled. The Z far is how far away it culls. And then we've got an X and a Y overscan. So have a quick look at our camera view. You've got your X overscan here and your Y overscan there. Ooh. So let's reset these back to default. And let's have a look at some of our object settings. By default, it runs over points. So any point that is kept inside the frost room is kept and anything outside the frost room is removed. So let's just run it over primitives. And all this does it is it promotes our points to our primitives so for a primitive as long as one point is inside the frost room it keeps the whole primitive but what happens if we've got part of an object inside the view and we want to keep everything of that object well, that's fine let's just tick use connectivity and what it will do is it will use the connectivity of each object and if a single point is inside that frost room it will keep the whole geometry. There we go. So when a single point is inside that frost room, it's keeping the whole object. Let's go ahead and look at more of the camera options. So we've got our current frame, which is just using the frame that we're on to cull the objects. We've got a single frame, which takes a single frame of the camera, but keeps the animation of our objects. So if I was to delete this and just move this up over time, you can see how our frost room moves based on the frame we're selecting, but doesn't move over the timeline. And then finally, we have frame range. And what this does is it takes an input frame, an output frame, and a trail increment, which is every, in this case, fourth frame. So this setup, it will take 31 camera positions. It's frozen at the end. And if the point appears in any one of those camera positions, it is kept. So if you've got a really slow moving camera, you might want to change your increments up. So you have less samples. Or if you've got a really fast moving camera and you want to have it up, 
change shot increment to two. It will take longer to calculate because it's using more camera samples. In this case, two every second frame will probably give us about 60 odd camera sample. There we go, 61 camera samples. So as you can see there, that is what it's using. But for this sort of camera move, I only really need four camera samples. So those are our options for our camera. You input your camera here, choose your near, you choose your far, pop in some overscan, decide whether you want the current frame, a single frame or a frame range. And that gives us our camera frustrum that our points are then used to be cold. Let's have a quick look at a few more object settings. So if we look at our geometry spreadsheet here, and just tick run over primitives. So we're just running over points, but because use connectivity is still on, it's keeping all the objects. You can see here, we get our P position, which is what's coming from our input. If I tick on output distance from camera, we get a cam distance. And this is roughly the distance that that point is from the camera. So you can see here, each point gets its own separate value. This will be useful if at some point later on down the pipeline in your script, you want to be able to use that distance to determine something. And again, if we tick run over primitives, that value now goes to our primitives. Finally, we've got input pack geometry. If I tick current frame, and I just go ahead and I just assemble these. So they're now pack geometry. Let's click use connectivity for the moment. Right, so now you can see that spheres are cut in half, which is what we want. But if we put input geometry as packed, it's taking each primitive as a single point, uh, which is what our packed geometry is. So if we go ahead and we look at the wireframe ghost, you can see how it's keeping the individual point rather than the primitive. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can say actually our input geometry is packed and now it's treating it as though it was points again. We've got an option here which is repack geometry. So if we now click on this on our info tab, you can see how it's still packed fragments as it comes out. If we were to untick repack geometry and look at this you can see it's now just polygons again so it's unpacking geometry as it goes in if we want to repack it again as we come out we just hit repack if we want to leave it unpacked when it comes out let's hit that we've also got use pack connectivity which is the same as use connectivity but it takes the packed objects rather than the actual physical connectivity. So let's say, for example, you have two, these two spheres here, sphere A and sphere B, and they are actually one packed object. What it will do is when you hit use packed connectivity, if any part of one of these two spheres is inside the first room, they will both be kept. But even though they're not physically connected, which is what use connectivity would do, Use packed connectivity says if part of the packed object is inside the frost room, keep the whole packed object. Hopefully you found that useful. The tool is on Gumroad. It's pay what you want. So I'll leave the link in the description down below. So go ahead and go grab it. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please do let me know. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.